Okay, let's um, briefly discuss these uh, radical initiators. So, um, you've already learned of one radical initiator, and we talked about it um, before. It's this N NBS. Do you guys remember that? Um, and it had that nitrogen bromine bond. And remember, we talked about how it was a real weak bond due to the um, orbital overlap is bad between the nitrogen, which is very small, and the bromine, which is very big, right? So, um, in this case, as you can see, um, we don't have that similar big, small um, orbital overlap, these two atoms. And all of these examples are the same atom, right? Two CLs, two oxygens, two oxygens. So they're all the same size. But um, what uh, you want to know about all of these is that these, especially these uh, halogens, right? They have a weak um, halogen-halogen <coughs> bond, OK? And you know that we, saw, we talked about that with Br2, we could shine light on it and break it apart too. Okay, so it's very similar. Chlorine is more reactive, and we'll talk about uh, the different halogens and their reactivity in a little bit. But um, chlorine is the one that you see used most often, and it's due to its um, very weak um, bond. There, you can see it's two two hundred and forty-three kilojoules per mole, right? These peroxides, um, if you guys have ever used like hydrogen peroxide or whatever, right? You know that it's a very reactive material, okay? The reason being is because of these oxygen oxygen bonds. So this could be like, you could think of this as like hydrogen peroxide or something like that. Sometimes you'll have these organic peroxides, so you can dissolve them into organic solvents, you know, and use them um, that way. But, anyways, you can see. Um, when we have that oxygen-oxygen bond, what's going to happen? So in both of these, right, let's draw the mechanism. The mechanism of that one is there, right, of course. Mechanism of that one is just like that. Right? It's that this oxygen-oxygen bond is very weak, too. And it's just, um, they would not prefer to be bonded to each other. And then, of course, once you make a what's called a peroxy acid, these things here. These are even, got even a more weak oxygen-oxygen bond due to the resonance that you can, so let's draw a couple of resonance structures of this thing, right? So we've got that one that's drawn there for us. That, right? But we should be able to draw another one. Hopefully, everybody can. You guys can, right? Do it. So remember, whenever you can make resonance, that gives added stability to the particular structure that you're looking at. Okay, so this decrease in um, uh, bond dissociation energy is due to the relative stability of the radical that's formed. So this is stable, especially relative to something like this that has no ability to resonate. Is everybody okay with that? Does that make sense? You can initiate these usually with either heat or light. It'll give them enough energy. Not very good. Isn't that still the same? It's two resonance structures, right? That yeah. radical, that electron. That electron yeah. is on both of those things, okay? So it's got partial character on both of them. They're resonant structures of each other. How, how, why? Because if we label this oxygen one, that's still oxygen mm -hmm. one then, right? 
Label that oxygen two, that's still oxygen two. Okay. Don't think too, thinking way too hard about it, okay? Any other questions? <laughs>